So this is how the secondary batteries will be. So you can see some of the examples of secondary batteries. So if you see a secondary cell after use can be recharged by passing current through it in the opposite direction so that it can be used again. A good secondary cell can undergo a large number of discharging and charging cycle. So this is the depiction of the lead storage battery which is an example of secondary cell. The most important secondary cell is the lead storage battery commonly used in automobiles and inverters which you can able to see it here. So it consists of a lead anode which you can able to see here this one and a grid of lead packed with lead dioxide as cathode. A 38% solution of sulfuric acid is used as an electrolyte. The cell reactions when the battery is in use are given below. At anode, lead on reacting with sulfate ion gives lead to sulfate plus electron. In terms of a cathode, lead for dioxide on reaction with sulfate and hydrogen ion with electron gives lead for dioxide and water. Therefore, the overall reaction consisting of cathode and anode will be lead on reaction with lead for dioxide and sulfuric acid gives lead sulfate. So this one is lead sulfate, it's not lead for dioxide. There is a small correction. Plus water it gives. On charging the battery, the reaction is reversed and PBSO4 on anode and cathode is converted into PBN PBO2 respectively. Another important secondary cell is the nickel cadmium cell which has longer life than the lead storage cell but more expensive to manufacture. We shall not go into details of working of the cell and the electrode reactions during charging and discharging. If you see the overall reaction during this charge, it will be cadmium on reaction with nickel 3 hydroxide gives cadmium oxide plus nickel 3 hydroxide and water. 